will with UTV Outlaws here. So one of the videos that we did in the past, um, we had really good feedback from was the custom trailer build. We got a lot of people asking for updates on it, um, you know, any future projects, stuff like that. So we got a lot of positive feedback. I did end up putting an outlet. I don't know if I went over this in the previous video. I did end up putting an outlet on the outside here. Um, it was pretty inconvenient to always have to go inside the trailer to plug your phone in or to do anything, you know, as far as plugging into 110. So I did run an outlet on the outside of here, and today we're going to be working on building a bed frame. So you come on in here, place is kind of tore up a little bit. So what I'm going to have is over on this side, I'm going to have a frame that folds down this side. I'm going to have a frame that folds down. It's going to have a couple legs down here that swivel out, and that's, that's what you know supports all the weight toward the middle of it. I ended up getting some three quarter inch, uh, 10 gauge square tube. And that's gonna be for the main structure. I got weld in a couple bars here. So I kind of got an idea going, you know. So that's why I, I'm getting into this probably halfway through it. You know, just try to get an idea what I was doing. Um, I do have to weld a bar in here um, on both sides. And then I gotta re start assembling it from there. Uh, I do got a couple weld studs in here. So they're threaded weld studs. Um, you can hand weld these if you want to, um, and those are going to be for the swivel points. So that'll be where my leg comes and swivels right there, and then I figure you could just tighten up, tighten or loosen the nuts, you know, to make it nice and tight when it's swiveling down, but you don't want it too much, too over the top. So um, I did take some 3 8 plywood, and I put it on both sides, so that'll be, you know, that'll be the length of the, the bed itself. We did have an air mattress in here before. The air mattress was kind of inconvenient because you can't store anything underneath it and it's kind of dead space above you. So you sit on an air mattress and you got six feet above you that you really can't do nothing with. At least with something that's up in the air, you could put your luggage bags or um, spare parts or whatever. You could slide stuff underneath the bed. And then our mattress that we got should be able to fold up so we can use it kind of as a couch here in front of it so i did end up picking up some flat plate so in case i need to do anything probably with the legs when i swivel down i want it to end at a certain point so i might you know notch those out so it stops it you know some kind of little stopper so um yeah i'll be going through stuff we'll do a time lapse probably on a lot of this stuff so i'll be going over things uh as we go so so you can see this is the plywood I ended up getting. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but I wanted something that looked pretty decent. So it's three quarter inch. It's going to be kind of heavy, um, but I think it'll I think it'll hold it nicely. And then the plan is to put it on top of the frame because it's going to hold everything, you know, keep it from racking, and it's going to hold everything tight. So all right, I'll show you guys the next step. So generally, when we're welding stuff up, you know, Tim's got a 220 MIG. This is just a little 110 unit, but this stuff's pretty thin, so you shouldn't need much more than this, you know, for welding stuff that, that's this thin, so. Um, another thing to keep in mind, too, is when this thing swivels up into the wall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lock pin up here. So as you flop, you know, flop the thing up in the air, you lock it in place, and I might have like a safety catch or something like that just in case, but I want it to bolt into place, that way it makes it really easy. Basically, I'm trying to get away from, you know, it being difficult during these trips. The easier easier it is, the better. So, um, on the one side that attaches to the wall, I got to still figure out exactly what I'm doing here. But I just got a piano hinge. You can see it right here. Um, piano hinge is pretty strong when you, um, when you put it on something, you know, that long. But mainly the weight is going to go on the legs. So, I just want something that... You know, keeps everything together and something that would rotate. So piano hinge will should work out pretty good. So uh, another thing I wanted to do too. So this this bar, like I said, is three quarter. The plywood's three quarter. So I'm only going to be an inch and a half off of the wall. 
So I didn't want anything. I've seen some of them where it's hanging off the wall six inches, stuff like that. Or some of them that come down from the ceiling and it's hanging down, you know, 10 inches probably. I've seen a few, um, stuff like that. So I didn't want anything that was hanging crazy low or anything coming off the walls too much. When I'm loading this thing up, I generally don't want to be interfered with, you know, with a bunch of stuff hanging off the wall. So just trying to make everything a little bit easier. So hopefully it works out. Um, probably get a time lapse going here shortly and I'll fill in from time to time. So this is what we had going there. So I just wanted to attach this little wall. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the piano hinge and the frame up here. And I'm gonna tack weld every other hole coming across here. So what I did is I used a half inch bit just to open it up enough. And then in there is like a quarter 20. I just tapped out into each stud. Um, basically I just wanted to make sure it was more secure. So I wanted to attach it to the stud and I figured tapping it's the best bet for doing that. So, um, but yeah, I attached it to these three studs. I'm gonna come through and every other I'm gonna weld and then the opposite I'm gonna drill through it but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a small screw just into the plywood just to give it a little extra security but right now it's it's uh it's attached to uh, the studs itself so I'm just gonna probably give it a little bit more security after that so all right so on the back side of this piano hinge to the frame that I've already you know started assembling you can see you know every once in a while I went you know here at the end I went double here but Every other I got welded, you know, just spot welded. Um, I think it's gonna be stronger doing that than using any kind of screws or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this frame. So I'm gonna do a time lapse on this, show you guys what that looks like. So this section's done. So obviously on the other side, I still gotta build that other frame, but I'll, it's gonna be the same thing over there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and weld that other bar in. I'm gonna mount that other bar to the wall, but you guys can see what's going on here. Um, so this is the top side. So I'm gonna take all these three um, welds. I'm just gonna slightly hit it with a grinder so that way it's not holding the plywood up in the air. And then the plywood will sit right on top of here once everything's mounted. So another thing too is I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna spray paint these. Normally I prefer kind of like a semi-gloss, but I actually think a high gloss would look good in this application. So I'm gonna go pick up a little bit of spray paint. Um, I'm probably just gonna do it in the trailer. I'll just go slow with it. You know, that way you're not over spraying stuff or whatever. So um, rather than holding up the assembly, I would like to get it assembled tonight and then probably paint it tomorrow. So, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and then uh, probably try to get this thing at least mounted tonight. All right, we got it all cleaned up here. I uh, also wire wheeled it a little bit. Um, just knock off some of the debris. Um, so those are the weld studs that we were talking about earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a leg here, two legs here, and then the other leg's gonna go down here. It'll go straight down to the ground. And like I said, it'll all fold up. So you guys will see how it works here shortly. Um, so right now I'm just making my length here on the bottom portion of the leg. And then I'm gonna cut all four of these standards and uh, start assembling them. So this is what I got going on with the leg here. So um, that's where I'm gonna nut it down and I'm gonna cut off the length here on that stud. But you can see that's gonna be the bottom piece that's gonna swivel down and it's gonna go right here. 
And then there's the other two legs, those will attach later, so I just want to get my length done first and then fill those in. Um, so when I drilled those out, um, obviously you want to do them on a flat surface. This is, you know, what I just have available out here, so as far as that brick goes. Um, you generally want to stick with your smallest bit first. You want to go ahead and buzz all the way through it. And then, so where the weld is at is actually a little bit thicker, so I had to go back through with a, a thicker drill bit or a bigger drill bit and drill out this side. So it's three eighths all the way through, and then I just finish this side with a half inch just to give it a little bit more room for the weld. So, um, gonna be a lot of drilling. I mean, this project has been pretty involved, there's a lot to it, a lot more than I, I was thinking originally, but uh, hopefully, it's worth it all in the end. So all right, I'll show a uh, time lapse here, just assembling everything here and welding it up. So this is what we got. I put a couple nuts on there. So this whole piece swivels right here. There's the foot piece. So you can kind of get a visual from back here. Obviously this end over here, well that'll mount to the wall. And then that leg will flip out just like so. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like all said and done. But you can see it's got double braces here. It's got one on each side. Everything's nutted. I gotta put a couple nuts there in the middle. Um, so another thing you're gonna have to do obviously is that kind of hangs up a little bit so when that goes to rotate it's going to have plywood on top so you're gonna have to take and take a grinder and you're going to have to roll this edge right here so that's something else you guys are going to have to to deal with um let me think what else do i have to do um i gotta clean everything up i decided not to put the thing on tonight i'm probably just going to go ahead and paint it um while it's down so and then last step after I paint it will be to put the plywood on it. All right, so different day out here. Uh, I ended up getting a little bit of rain when I was working on it in the middle of the night. So came out here the following day. Um, most of the frame is uh, pretty pretty assembled here. I got to go ahead and attach the hinge to the wall. Um, but you can see it's, you know, it's kind of in its place right now. So the plan is this last hole right here, I'm going to go ahead and weld every other there. So... And then where you see the screw at, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill out half inch hole and I'm gonna put that exact screw, but it's gonna set into the metal. That way it goes into the plywood. So you guys seen earlier in the video, I did um, I did a drill and tap on three screws. Now I just wanna add a little security by screwing it into the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a time lapse and then I'll kind of show you guys a little bit more of what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So. You guys just seen in the time lapse i went every other hole i went ahead and did a weld um so these two plates these this hinge when it rotates down they need to sit flush to each other when this bed is all the way in the down position so what i'll do is i'll go in here and with a wire you know whip wheel and i'll just clean everything up and see how it looks if i need to maybe i'll take a grinder just clean them up just a little bit just to get them to sit nice with each other and then uh um, next step will be I'm gonna have to drill out every other hole the ones that don't have weld on them I'm gonna have to drill those out and I'm gonna hold that bar that you've seen at the beginning of the video 
I want to hold that a little bit tighter. So I know we drilled and tapped those into the studs, but I just want a little extra security. So I'm going to go ahead and drill all these out. I'm just going to run a screw into the plywood with those just to add a little security to it. So, all right, I'll have a time lapse on that next. So you guys could see everything was done in the time lapse there. So, um, like I said, every other hole, you know, I got it cleaned up a little bit too with the grinder just to try to get everything to sit flat on there. So, um, you can see every other hole's got a screw in it, just a little extra security, you know, make sure uh, they're just screwing in the plywood, but we already tapped into the studs themselves. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead. I haven't touched anything on the other side. Obviously, you guys don't need to see the other side. It'll just be a mirror image of this. So uh, once it comes down to me finishing that side up, I'll go ahead and show you guys the next step as far as the whole assembly. All right, so this is where we're at right now. So this side, this half is pretty much buttoned up. Um, so I got about a quarter of an inch over with the plywood, about a quarter of an inch on each, each side over. So you can see it sits down in this channel down here. And I just set it all the way down there and then I kind of marked it and then I gave it about a quarter of an inch longer than that. You can see this is the latch that I was talking about earlier. I'll do a little demonstration later, but you basically just push this up and then the whole thing folds over and then that arm comes out. So this is uh, the other side here. Um, I'm in the middle of uh, grinding and getting this side all done up. So next step is going to be paint on this side. Um, I'm going to get the plywood over here and then I'll kind of do a little demonstration here at the end of the video and show everything probably like, you know, done with the mattress on it and everything else. So that way you guys can get a visual for exactly what's going on. But yeah, the frames are, you know, the frames got probably maybe a little bit over a half an inch gap between the two of them, but I'm going to try to make that up, you know, in the difference to plywood and the trailer is not exactly square when they built it. So that's why I left it hang over about a quarter of an inch up here. Um, that way I can power plane it down, try to make it, you know, pretty pretty exact, you know, all the way across. So maybe get, a, you know, an eighth of an inch gap all the way across there. So um, I did lay this side down. I put the foot down um, and it is very solid. So this three quarter inch tube, um, this is 14 gauge. So it's, you know, a little over a sixteenth of an inch, but it's pretty solid stuff. So. Um, they sell something similar at Menards. I checked it out. It was it was garbage and it was real expensive, so I wouldn't suggest using that. Um, I went by a local steel shop and they had some stuff that they would recommend. So, um, so yeah, if you end up uh, building something similar, I would probably go with something similar as far as you know, 14 gauge. Um, I think it's plenty strong. All right, so we got both sides done now. Um, everything's kind of a mess as you can see. Um, this side we got unlatched we got it set down there's the foot on the ground this side over here is uh obviously up in the air so i kind of demonstrate here pop this out you pull this pin up top here slides right out of the place if you find that this is too tight it might be bound up you might need to clear it out just a little bit more with a bit okay and then flip it down and Trying to do this one-handed, so I'm flipping it out with my foot, and voila, that's your surface right there. So um, you can see both feet are out. Probably make some kind of brace that goes in between here, just in case the kid goes up here and starts jumping around on top of the bed. Um, the leg doesn't come, up, you know, folding back or something like that. So I'll make some kind of brace to just lock everything in place. Um, but yeah, everything's pretty much done. So um, I had that tire mounted back here, so. Took a sander, cleaned it up just a little bit, make it look decent. So if you guys have any marks on your walls or whatever, if you sand them down a little bit, you know, it tends to get rid of the, 
the mark. So obviously a rubber tire mounted to the wall right there made a little mark. So um, I'll go ahead. Uh, this place is a mess. So I'll go ahead and get it cleaned up and then I'll show you guys the final product here. All right, so you guys might be asking yourselves, what does building a custom toy hauler have to do with an RZR? You know, this is typically an RZR channel, but uh, this is exactly what it's for. So um, I pull my machine to and from the dunes. Uh, it ends up being pulled out of the trailer, hooked up to the bar system that we have in one of our previous videos. I kind of went over that for getting in and out of the dunes, and then this doubles for a toy hauler. So you can see both beds, this is you know all folded up. We just got done going on vacation, so the video I shot was a few days ago. Um, but you can see how low, low of a profile it's got here, so you can still squeeze by it. A lot of the big toy haulers, you know, they got the cushions already built into these things and they hang off the walls. You have no room to walk by it or anything like that, but you can see this maintains a very low profile, so you can still fit around it. And then I just uh, leave the mattress folded up in the front of the, the uh, trailer here, so. You can also see here, I, I don't know if I went over this in the previous video, I added a second latch to it right there. So I got one up top, one down here. So everything's still got to be sanded. If I wanted to paint it or anything like that, I could figure that out down the road, but figured I'd just get it going for now and just, uh, but I'll still show you guys, you know, everything down, show you uh, that it's working okay. Um, but yeah, we used it all weekend, ended up working awesome. All right, so on my notes, I had, um, I notched this out so that when this thing folds up, this thing folds all the way into it. If you keep this bar all the way through, it might be a little bit stronger. I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference, but this just allows it to lock into place and it just keeps that lower profile. Um, so this is the mattress that we bought. I think it's called a Millard. Um, I got the six inch tri-fold. Um, it, it is awesome. So I, we used it for the weekend. Um, I was thinking about getting a four inch. I didn't really want the the bulk of the six inch. I started reading the reviews and stuff like that. It seemed like the six inch is generally what everybody was saying. Um, it was very comfortable. A lot of people didn't care for the four inch. So I went with that and I'm glad I did. So um, you could also see the plywood when I attached it. Um, this is the screws that I use. I just countersunk them a little bit. So they just hang up just a little bit, but it's not enough to get caught on anything. It's not enough to make them dangerous or anything like that. Like you can't, uh, kid, you know, won't get caught on it or anything like that. So um, let me think what else. As far as weight capacity on this thing, so we used it for the weekend. And it, I mean, you you have a couple people on it, a couple adults on it, and it doesn't budge. I mean, this thing would probably support um, I don't know, probably six, 700 pounds, maybe more, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to throw at it. So, um, but I feel, I felt very secure about having this thing up. So, all right. So this is the finished product right here. So, uh, that mattress that I just got done showing you guys, like I said, it's a six inch Millard trifold. Um, I think it might've been a little over 200 bucks, maybe in a 220 range, something like that. I bought it on Amazon. Um, like I said, it's awesome. So I would highly recommend it. Um, uh, at the very end of this video, I'll go ahead and show you guys. I got a, the original toy hauler video um, where I kind of give you an overview of everything. I mean, this thing's got windows in it, AC unit, refrigerator, microwave. Um, it's got a TV, stuff like that. So at the very end of this video, I'll go ahead and send, set up a link for the, um, the, bit, the original video. So that way, if you guys want to just work your way over there and you guys can check that out. Um, if you guys can, uh, share and subscribe. I mean, that's the two best ways really to help us out with all this stuff is to to uh, subscribe to our content. Um, so we'll have more projects similar to this and a lot more RZR content. I mean, this is our RZR channel, but we kind of show things that are, you know, semi-related to it. So um, I would say I have a lot of time tied up in the building this thing. Uh, probably... I don't know, the better part of a couple, you know, a couple, two, three days. So it took a lot longer than I was originally thinking it was going to, but it was definitely worth it. So all that space you gain underneath for all your storage and stuff like that just helps out a ton. Like I said, you know, just being able to make things easier, you know, where you don't have to set up an air mattress or anything like that just makes everything go a lot smoother. So the easier you can make these trips, the more likely you are to make them, you know, make the trip itself. So anything to make your life easier is going to be a huge plus. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of give you guys my, my final thoughts. I wanted to actually go out and use it before I gave you guys my final thoughts. So it's taken a little bit to get the video rolling, but um, 
you know, I wanted to make sure I was very thorough with it. So, yeah, like I said, if you guys can, uh, share and subscribe the video, and then we'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Thanks. What do we got going on today, Tim? We're gonna do a skid plate, a little sketch. Ain't going nowhere. Why don't you go show me the other side? Yeah. Doing side by side things here. We'll play a tug of war with the cage, see how well it holds up. But we're gonna put a big skid plate on this thing. 